Hello, I am Brendan Levitt, and this is the third in my series of tutorials on Honeybee for Grasshopper. I'm going to start up where we left off last time, which was with our first successful uh, energy simulation. And now we're going to take a look at the results and see uh, what they tell us, if there's uh, anything noticeably wrong or problematic with it. It's the first thing to look for. So to do that, we need to visualize the results. and. If you go up here to the tabs, instead of the honeybee tab, you go over to the ladybug tab. Um, under visualize weather data, um, you can see a whole bunch of visualization uh, components. Let's go with this ladybug 3D chart. This is a good place to start. And uh, you can see that this is a 3D chart which requires some input data. and in our Energy Plus simulation, we have a results file address, but no results yet. So we need to bridge the two. The way to do that is to go to Honeybee, and in 09, um, there's this Honeybee read EP result. Drop that on the canvas. And here we can hook up the result file address to the result file address, and you'll see that. Um, the variables that we've requested show up here. When we disconnected this, you see there's a whole bunch more variables, but we only requested a subset of those, and we'll come back to this in a second. So right now we've only got a few categories that we've um, requested, and if I hook up a panel to that, you can see that we've got um, the location um, in Oakland, that's the um, weather file that we ran, with a total thermal energy for zone one in kilowatt hours monthly. And um, this is just showing uh, January and February, so it's ran between January 1st and February 28th uh, from midnight to midnight. And we have two values here, 130 and 149. Those are the two monthly totals of uh, energy use, or thermal energy use. So if you hook those up to our input data for the three-dimensional graph, you'll see um, back on the Rhino canvas, I'm going to go to the top view and zoom extents here, a very underwhelming graph that shows January energy use, or thermal energy use, and February thermal energy use, blue and orange. And you can see that, oh, you can't see that. There we go. The the scale here goes, uh, it automatically finds the, the extremes. So uh, that's why we only have two numbers here. So it's finding 150 and uh, minus 130. Um, and again, uh, sorry, it's not showing it minus. We have two extremes here, um, 149.47 and 130.56, and those are the two values that we got for our total thermal energy use. Um, in order to see a little bit more in depth um, what's going on during those two months, we actually have to go back to our simulation output component. And notice there is this time step. This time step uh, will allow you to run the simulation hourly, daily, monthly, or annually. Um, let's, for now, let's just run it hourly. And when I plug this in, it's going to rerun the whole, the whole simulation. So it'll launch that window and gets done very quickly. Now all of a sudden we've got uh, two months of data, January and February. And you can see that the scale has changed, too, uh, because it's averaging the data over that time. So it goes from 0 kilowatt hours of energy to 2.62 kilowatt hours. And this, um, this graph type, it's called a heat map or a 3D graph, is, uh, extends from uh, midnight to 6 a.m. in the morning to noon to 6 p.m. in the afternoon to midnight again. And you can see the patterns start to show up of uh, sort of morning warm-up here um, when there's uh, energy put into the zone uh, when, when people start to come in, when it starts to be occupied. You can also see patterns here of weekends where 
um, the zone is not occupied on these Saturday and Sunday. So, um, so it's sort of making sense in an abstract way. Um, and you can actually input any one of these variables into this uh, scale and see it. So we can just see the cooling energy here, which looks a lot like the total thermal energy. We can just see the heating energy there. Or we can just see the electric equipment there, or, or sorry, that was the, the lights, not the electric equipment, or here's the equipment here. Um, so one thing I noticed right off the bat is that the electric equipment, actually let me copy these so you can compare the two. You put the lights on top and the um, equipment on the bottom, and I can change the base point here to say zero, I'm not really sure what the scale is. Let's see if this works. I'm going to plug this in. Yeah, that seems to work pretty well. So now I can compare these two, um, the lights on top and the equipment on the bottom. And you can see that they start to go on around the same time in the morning and they go off around the same time in the evening, except that the equipment appears to not actually go off. You know, there's a small amount of equipment that's on at night and in the morning. It does look like it goes off on the weekends. So notice here that the um, energy use of the lights on top is at a different scale than the equipment on the bottom. And so this can be misleading. Uh, there is a way to um, to force the low boundaries and high boundaries of the graphs, and I'll show you that over here. If you um, you can um, bound the legend here with legend parameters, I'm going to double click, type legend parameters, and navigate to ladybug legend parameters there, and I'm going to plug that into both legend or both graphs. And then I'm going to set a low boundary and a high boundary. So I'll use a panel here just to set a low boundary of 0 and a high boundary of 0.44. And so now we see these two graphs are um, reflect the, the relative amount of energy uh, you can see that the lights are using a lot more energy than the equipment is during the daytime. At nighttime, particularly in the early morning between, uh, say, 11 p.m. and 6 a.m., the equipment is actually using more energy than the lights are. Uh, and you can see that the equipment actually never goes off, never goes to zero on this graph. So um, you can start to reveal some things about the, the um the schedules and the equipment that are uh, that were a little bit hidden before until we start to visualize them. So there's millions of ways that you can visualize the data uh, using the just these simple heat maps, and um, I'll leave it to you to explore them and the different um, outputs. I should point out before uh, we leave this part, though, that um, over here where we requested. Uh, different outputs for the simulation outputs. We just requested the energy use. If we request some of these other ones, I'm going to reset this and sorry, turn my boolean to false uh, for the run so it doesn't keep running as I plug things in here. And I'm going to just get the energy use, gains and losses, and comfort metrics. And now when I run it, it's going to run all of those different output variables. Let's just make sure it ran correctly. Yes, we still got seven warnings and zero severe errors. So it's the same set of warnings that we had before. And um, now you can see it's populated with a lot more or different uh, variables. So we can now, in this case, look at the temperature inside the zone. Uh, so why don't I plug that in? Of course, now it's at a different scale than 0 to 0 0.44. So I'm going to disconnect that scale. And you can see the temperature ranges between 
14.8 and 22.5 Celsius, um, and this is January and February, um, I suspect we're using some heating energy then, though I guess this is the best way of finding out. Let's see, I'll disconnect this parameter down here and connect in heating. No, we're not. So you can see that just the heating goes on in the morning and then it must be the internal gains that are warming up the zone here uh, to the upper boundaries of uh, the actual cooling limit. Um, so one way to look at that is to compare the, the gains from people and uh, solar and infiltration. So you could look at all these as heat maps um, and graph them. You could also look at them just as data. And right now they're as um, data streams of you know uh, hourly data. And so if I hook up a panel to say the cooling energy here, um, it gives me a, a header and then the hourly data for those two months. You can also get these uh, values as as a list of values and then perform uh, grasshopper functions on them. And so uh, the way to do that is to go up to the ladybug tab and uh, pull down this uh, ladybug separate data. Um, and this takes this input list and it basically gets rid of the that header on top. So I'll I'll put the cooling hours into the input list, and out of this, if I open up a panel, it's going to come just the list of numbers associated with it. In this case, it looks like there's a whole lot of zeros where there's no cooling going on in the winter. Um, why don't I plug in something else like heating? Yeah, now I've got some numbers in there. And, um, and so that now you can perform um, any... Uh, basic uh, grasshopper functions on them, like for instance summing them. And I can type in mass addition here, attach the numbers to the uh, input here, and come out with just one sum of all of the heating energy being used for these two months. Uh, then I can plug in all of these equipment, lights, heating, and cooling. If I flatten this, I can now have a list of energy values by end use. I just need to keep track of the order in which I've plugged these in. So that's an overview of visualizing and uh, manipulating data. And now um, we're going to take a step back in the next video and take a look at some of the defaults that. Um, Honeybee has assumed and the assumptions, the underlying assumptions and how you can change those, customize it. So with that, I will see you on the other side.